Hey, this is Vu, and I've become increasingly frustrated with the way my teammates are playing Mirage, even at the Face It 10 level, and I want to go over why you suck at this map and how you can get better. But first, our sponsor for this video, CS Money. CS Money is having a limited time event ending June 22nd. Let's take a look at the world famous AK Asimov and compare prices. You can see comparing the price that in trade mode, the skin is currently $86 and in sale mode with the 30% discount, it's under 70. Did someone in the back of the class ask, what's store mode and what's trade mode? I'm so glad you asked. Store mode, you can purchase items only for real money with a separate payment that can't use the balance on the site, and it can be opened by clicking on store on the main menu. In trade mode, you can use both the balance and the items from your inventory. Unfortunately, in this mode, you don't have the discount, but still have a standard 25% top-up bonus. So what's the event? Well, Epic Skin Run is an event during which CS Money has a 40% top-up bonus and a 30% discount in their store mode. Users can top up balance for a minimum of $5 to participate in a variety of giveaways and the giveaways are on a scale that you can track and increase through purchases in both trade and store mode. Purchase of course being any time a user picks up items from bots in any way and any payment format including exchange skins or purchasing for real money or from account balance. Click the link in the description to join the event at epicskinrun.cs.money. Now the very first thing I want to talk about before I go anywhere else is the most simple and easy to execute thing that you want to be doing and that's if you're an A player you should be flashing mid for your mid player every single round. The only spawns as a CT that actually beat all of the T spawns are something like the best two or three spawns up here at the front, and these will beat all of the T spawns to window. The rest of them, and there's about 17 spawns, so you know, like 80% of the time, you're going to have an opera window that has spawns that can get beat by the best T spawns. And that means if he goes in a window and he doesn't have a flash from his A player, or at least the connector player, but it should be the A player, he either has to not peek mid at all, which is gonna rob you of a ton of information and someone could just rush right down and kill your connector player, or he's going to have to peek late and hope that someone's not posted on him or someone hasn't already swung out around the corner or something but like that. are smaller improvements. So to begin with, what I see a lot of people do at lower levels is they play 2A because their connector side player, he'll just stay stairs for most of the round and just post up on Palace the entire round. And the A player will play, you know, wherever he's going to play, just focused on ramp entirely. And while it's okay to occasionally do this, the main thing you want to understand is that mid control is of the utmost importance on this map. And if you have a player stairs and they take connector control, this guy's stairs is going to be pretty uncomfortable. So typically what you'll do is you'll allow the A player to throw his utility at ramp. This player will fight in towards middle. You'll try to establish mid control. And then when the A player's smoke and molly has gone down, then this player will do something like look palace every once in a while while holding middle or they will rotate over to A, play somewhere like stairs, or you'll have a full map rotation, which is the second problem I see lower level players almost never do. Now the idea here is that late round, you want to be getting into the setup, an opera ticket, a rifler, either close ramp in, you know, this area or inside of ramp. You could be playing this area as well, or, you know, up here on balcony, basically just shutting down at least one of the entrances to the A bomb site. And you have your connector player rifling playing, you know, this kind of area here where he can shut down the CT push or, you know, the murder hole push from the T's and he can easily react if the opera makes contact in connector and he's kind of just playing these areas. He can play an angle like this. There's a lot of different options really for this player, but the main idea is that you're in a setup where the opera is ticket and kind of overwatching a lot. You know, if your A player is watching Palace, he's mostly looking ramp, and then he's occasionally looking back towards middle here and trying to catch the guys towards connector. If he has an extra flash, he can even flash for that uh, for that connector jungle player to peek out mid late round and clear this out if he wants. There's a lot of different options, but the main thing is your window player should not be opping window the entire round. What'll happen is your opponents will have a 
the player come through underpass, this guy will get pushed back, and then oftentimes people will just kind of sit around in this area with the AW. But this is not a great spot. It's really easy to get smoked off, flashed, and kind of just attacked from a lot of very close range angles. So you want to get out of this when you can and end up in this other situation. Now the other thing your A player wants to be doing is I see far too many A players that simply play passive, essentially hiding on A and never getting aggressive at all because they're thinking to themselves, well, if I walk push ramp and someone's in there, I'm going to have a really bad time. And that may be true to some extent. However, if you think about this rationally, if you know your opponents are going for a 1-3-1, which you can pretty easily tell because they'll be putting a lot of pressure in middle and your teammates will likely hear a player in towards apartments as well, you can know that they're either in palace or in ramp, they can't be in both. So if they are 50-50 split, half of the time palace, half of the time ramp, and you win the duel half of the time when you run into them, you win the engagement essentially about 75% of the time because half the time they're not there and half the time when they are there, you get the kill anyways. And that makes this type of push extremely advantageous to get in an angle like this where you'll see their, uh, their shadow as they come up to peak this angle so you've got a clear advantage and you no longer have to worry about two angles at a time. Now I say the A player should be throwing the molly in the flash and the reason for that is because it's very hard to use your utility as an A player once your opponents are execing your bomb site. So typically you want to have the A player lead in with this molly and he's going to toss a molly, you know, he can get it deep or just generally you want to be bouncing it off of this left wall so that the peak of this molly will obscure vision of someone crossing over towards stairs. But regardless, you want him throwing the molly because if there's an A exec coming out, it's going to be very hard for him to do something like toss a molly into palace toss a molly into palace without leaving himself open to getting killed in the process or entirely giving away his position for free. However, if the connector player doesn't throw his molly early and instead holds on to it, if an A exec happens, he can easily turn around and molly palace instantly, giving away no information and allowing this A player to consistently keep his gun out and continually take these duels, especially with flashes that your cat player should be throwing, but no cat players and pugs do even at the highest level which are flashes that land high and behind so flashes that land up here and you can see how this works these land in front of your opponents coming out ramp but even a player under balcony won't be blind by these because they land so high and so you want to be having players throw that you can throw them from cat you can throw them from over here or you can even throw them from outside market like this where they go high over top of triple usually you call them you know the above triple flashes they'll blind your opponents very well and prevent them from scaling into the bomb site. Now the final thing the A side, the second final thing the A side players do wrong is this connector player never actually pushes through to help defend the A bomb site. Now you don't always want to be contesting because especially if th smokes are thrown poorly you can often have a gap here and kill people crossing triple and maybe your A player instantly dies and you just want to play retake. However, you want to have the threat of you contesting as a real possibility and the way you can manage that is if your a player is still alive on a as you get over to stairs there and he's doing a decent job of contesting you can some of the time just drop straight through into sandwich usually with one of your own flashes like this flashes like this where it pops out you pop straight through into sandwich at the same time and you can try and contest with your teammate and this is really effective because obviously now they have to cover a ton of different angles it's very hard for them to deal with this kind of crossfire. Usually they're not going to have any mollies left over ready to do it if they're not going for a very early round exec and you're you're really putting them in an awkward spot. And I said that was the second last thing. The last thing in the a, that A side players don't do enough is actually the connector player doesn't go window or he doesn't go jungle to connector. There's actually a very specific timing on these spawns that you want to be keeping in mind that if you want to be perfect, the best three spawns you want to be jumping out window to connector most of these a side spawns you want to be taking them through a to connector and then these back really bad spawns people typically take them a to connector however you can get caught very easily with those bad spawns by an opera peaking or an a rush so usually you would take these and you go through jungle 
to connector to avoid that potential problem. And again, because you're not supposed to be throwing the Molly A ramp, it's not actually an issue. Now, I said this guy should be jumping out window with some of his spawns. What you wanna do for that is you can just jump out window very simply. There's a couple of things you can do as variations though. So number one, you can always try and go for a cat jump. That's almost never a bad idea if you think you can make it, especially if you've got not, but you know, if you've got a rifle, you can still try to go for it. The second thing you can do is you can throw this smoke here. So what I do is I aim just right about at, at this little thing here, and I throw it just as I'm crossing into window here. It's gonna take a little bit of getting used to, but what that does if you throw it correctly is you can bounce and sit in front of it and it'll put out any mollies that land in connector. So you can always be sitting here, this molly's gonna get put out and you can get the kills. But the main thing that you'll typically wanna be doing here is you wanna be jumping out window and then you can throw a nade like this. And that nade's just gonna land in the middle here and damage anyone trying to swing out. And then after throwing that nade, you jump into connector and you can see if they're top middle. And if they're not top middle, you can easily pivot and go for a push up towards top middle. You can have this player looking at bottom mid and the opera looking at top mid. And that is actually a very strong and, you know, actually long-term holdable setup. Then eventually you might do something like push up middle, but you want to make sure that you're actually active in middle. This is another issue people typically have when it comes to Mirage. They just kind of sit around and do nothing. And if they're connector players and they don't see anyone connector, they just sit here and wait to see someone. Uh, you want to be a little bit more proactive than that. You know, even though you're going to be leaving your A player on an island to some extent sometimes, that A player can just play back here towards ticket and jump spot and play retake. The A player should not be playing in A site every single round. Now the things the B players are doing wrong, they're not throwing this smoke. This is actually a very easy smoke to throw and it's gonna land deep apartments on the fly. This is something that you used to have to have two players to actually be able to throw. Now you only need one so you can do this all on your own. So you aim at this thing here, this little wood beam, and then you're gonna jump throw as you cross this door and you don't even really need a jump throw bind i'm pretty sure this should work on both 64 and 128 tick just make sure that you strafe a tiny bit to the left from spawn to make sure that this lands correctly and that's going to land deep and that'll force people if they want to be contesting here to move forward and then you can easily do something like molly deep here in apartments and go for an aggressive play you can toss that molly and then as the molly is going down you do something like you right click a flash into it as it's going down you just kill this player in kitchen uh, later on. But the thing that B players often do wrong, primarily in my eyes, is that they don't play aggressive enough when they know their opponents are defaulting. Yes, of course, you don't want to be dying as a B player. If you can help it, it's very important you don't die in fact. However, with this type of deep B apps smoke, you can occasionally take control of this deep B apps area and make it incredibly hard for your opponents to actually get anything done. And if you're never doing that, you do make it a little bit too easy for a solo B player to just walk out here and feel very comfortable taking these duels, knowing that you're rarely going to be doing something like getting flashed to peak this angle or really, you know, pushing deep into apartments with that deep smoke and this deep molly. On the T side, what people are doing wrong that really does annoy me is they try to go for A execs far too often. A executes aren't supposed to be all that effective if you're playing the CT side correctly. And very often I feel like people only go for A execs because they take the bomb site and get the bomb plant, even though they don't really win the round that often. On top of that, the way you should go for an A exec should almost never have five players there. When it comes to Mirage, a very default oriented map, you almost always want to have a player that goes middle and puts some pressure in middle, you know, with the top mid smoke, a molly connector, and then, you know, some sort of flash out middle so that you can actually get your opponents to think that you're taking middle. It's going to be very obvious when, you know, five rounds in a row, you go for mid control and on the sixth round, oh, there's no mid smoke and no mid utility. I wonder what they're doing. They're going to read you and counter you very easily. You know, what you want to be doing is going for an A exec with four players instead of five and allowing your opponents to pressure middle. You know, what you optimally want is you want this connector player over here, like peeking deep into middle as you go for the exec, that way he has to move further over towards the A side to actually help. And the final thing people aren't doing right on this map is they're playing a B side defaulter way too consistently. 
Again, very often CT sides aren't playing aggressive almost at all, but even if they are playing aggressive on this B side, they're not going to be doing it very often, and they're typically going to be doing it with a smoke like this. And that all goes to show that they're very rarely going to push through if you don't have a player here, unless you're doing it very consistently. And that means on your T side, you should be occasionally running something like a 2-3-0. And a 2-3-0 entails one palace, one ramp, and three middle. And so what you're doing is you're feigning like it's a 1-3-1, so you're kind of baiting the A player to play a bit more aggressive. You're also drawing the connector player over so the A player is alone, and then you're double lurking out on the A player after you know that their connector player is, you know, on that mid side, and you're trying to make sure that you can trade or, you know, spot out and kill the A player with no potential for a trade from the CT side. This is why, as an A player, you want to try to be kind of actually on point with whether or not they are one 3 one before you get aggressive, and why, as a B player, can at least get the information and relay it back if there is a player in apartments so the A player can know that he can get aggressive himself and he's not getting hit by a 2 3 zero. This is also why playing retake on A a decent portion of the time is important because if you're going for a 2-3-0 and you're trying to double lurk out A and you just find the guy jump spotting ticket, it really does throw a wrench in the works to some extent and it makes that A take a little bit more complicated. But anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this helped and I hope my Mirage games go a lot more smoothly from now on.